What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Hunter, otherwise known as 100G. You may have seen me before talking about titties in the outfield or uh, yelling at an umpire. I don't know. You know how it goes, man. We're dropping bombs, dropping thongs, splitting gaps, splitting legs, swiping bags, swiping sisters. Out here in Las Vegas, not from here, but cruised on out. We're gonna make some sick, well, actually funny videos. We're gonna make some funny videos. It's gonna be tight. And yeah, we're gonna hit the gym. Saucy ass gym, bro. So sick, bodybuilders galore. I'm gonna be the smallest guy in the gym, without a doubt, but still the sexiest. And then, um, what else are we gonna do? We're gonna hit the batting cages. Slice and dice a little bit, split some gaps. Yeah, uh, that's, that's how the day's gonna go. We're gonna make two TikToks right now. Bullpen combos and uh, umpire thoughts, dude. You know I'm always bagging on umpires, dude, you know? So yeah, let's do it. Yeah, dude, got my umpire gear on. You know, gotta have the props, man, to make it look professional. Let's see, we're doing umpire thoughts today. So, you know those hooligans, man, they always, they always, you know, ringing people up in a different state, thinking about dinner later, maybe some big cocoa nuts in the stands. I don't know what they're thinking about. All I know is there's some trash umpires that I've come across, junior college especially, my gosh, dude. Be ring up and get rung up in a whole different atmosphere. Here we are on TikTok. Let's get the uh, let's get the funny face going. That's a classic. Okay. I gotta think. I gotta think of my dialogue here. So first off, okay, I'm gonna need you to hold the camera for me. But we're gonna have to go over by home plate. So some of it I'm gonna talk out loud. Others it's gonna be umpire thoughts. So it's gonna be what's going on in my head. I'm gonna have to take a couple look at my notes because I forgot what I'm saying. But got it written down. You know. The dialogue comes to me at any time, man. I could be sleeping, it could be 3 a.m. I'm, ta I'm talking, I am knocked out, dude. And all of a sudden, whoosh, that was a great idea. Okay. God, I'm so late to this game. So put this on. This one's gonna be an in thought in my head, so I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna record myself. Okay. Okay. In, in head thought, here we go. Holy shit. So I just gotta, uh, you'll see me voice over it afterwards. Beautiful. Son, you better be swinging today. I'm calling everything a strike. I don't care if the ball's in Texas. Beautiful. Okay, now the last one is uh, in my head thought. This is the hardest part, is putting the video together, especially with the, when I gotta do the voiceovers, find the spots. I'm calling everything a strike today. It's hotter than a saran wrap ball sack out here. Holy shit, I'm so late to this game. Why the hell am I always humping the bad news bears? I'm calling everything a strike today. It's hotter than a saran wrap ball sack out here. Can't wait to eject this D-bag coach. Taking enough practice swings just to ground out to second base again? Yeah, yeah, keep running your mouth, you cake magnet. What age did I get into baseball? What influenced me to start playing? Well, dude, um, I don't, dude, as long as I can remember, man, I know I was a little peewee out there. I got some Little League pictures of me and Verdugo. So I got some Little League pictures. Uh, there's me, Chuck in the Cheddar. Call me Henry Rowan Gardner. And then that's uh, Doogie playing first base right there. Yeah, dude, what influenced me to start playing? I don't know, man. I'd probably just say that I could stick it. You know what I'm saying? I woke up raking. I heard chicks dig the long ball, so I'm like, bet, let's go. It's basically what happened. Started splitting gaps at a young age.
what are some things that before playing college ball I wish I knew now? I mean, before if the things I know now I wish I knew before playing college ball. Guys, I could literally go on all day long with that because I'm the most non-cliche baseball player you ever had. Like, I had the wildest route, you know, like, I was um, totally thought I was getting drafted. And a lot of people, you know, want to think I'm ball cap and stuff, so I'll, I just wanted to reach let's uh, put some of my draft voicemails and stuff. Hey, Hunter, uh, this is Pete Holmes with the Toronto Blue Jays calling. Uh, I just wanted to reach so, out to you. I'm not I got a ton of other ones too, man, but I'm not going to put them all on video. I got tons of draft calls. Like, I was a good baseball player, but one thing is, is I walked into junior college with a huge head on me, like a massive head on me. I know it seems like I got a big head now, but I, if you get to know me, I'm actually, you know, I, I got a good soul. But, um, I walked in knowing I'm the man, which is good. You want to have that confidence. You want to walk up to the dish like you got the biggest dong in the place, no doubt. But like, I thought I was working hard until I quit baseball. So I always thought that I was the hardest worker, okay? Now I may have been, but when I quit baseball and realized that if you work nine to five, you're average, that's still an eight hour day. Was I practicing eight hours a day? Probably not. So I was like, that's average. When I started working 23, 20, like 20, 20 hours a day, I was like, I would have done that when it comes to baseball. Also, I started coaching when I got kicked off one of my teams and I took the fall off, I started coaching and I started to see what a coaches want in a player, you know? And so then I became that player my second year of junior college. I had coaches using me as an example. When we would run my first year of junior college, I'd always be way in the back because I'm like, I, I'm hitting, it doesn't matter. My second year, I'd be the best guy at the dish and I'd be the first guy running. You, you gotta set an example. You gotta be the stud, whether you're raking or we're running poles, man. Just be the man, dude. And I wish I knew that. And I wish that I would have worked harder and I wish I would have showed that I cared more, man. And it really, it bugs me, man. I really wish I could have done better in that way. Cause man, I would have been, like I was a good baseball player. I would have been phenomenal, dude, if I knew what I know now. I can still get pro offers and take literally two years off and I still have pro offers on my table and I could whip some out right now. I also work on everything, man. Have a cannon from the outfield, have speed, hit, but play to your strengths. Don't go up there trying to drop nukes if you don't hit nukes. Split gaps, dude. Chase down balls, man. If you use your speed, use your abilities that you have. And like, man, I could go on for days with good advice. Also, I used to get, real, I'd be like, why is this coach all over my ass? If your coach is not all over your ass, you're not good. Take that in, dude. Don't worry. Like, I hear a lot of guys saying, oh man, this coach, man, He's all over my ass. I don't think I'm gonna play. Yes, you are, man. You're gonna play. He's on your ass because you're good. Now, there are some coaches that do have it out for you. Do not get me wrong. There are some shit ass coaches that have it out for you. But I'm saying if a coach that is for you, you know, if you know he's for you and he's giving you a hard time, take that, take that personally in a good way, man, not in a bad way. Because I took it personally in a bad way a couple times. This is Chandler. We met in math class in junior college. Now let me tell you, we had no idea what the hell was going on. <laughs> I'm gonna promise you that. It took me four times to get out of college algebra. I'm really smart though. Just, I don't want to eat. It's math class. It was dude. bad. It was horrible. It was bad. We sat in the back. We talked about lifting the whole time. At the time, I was bigger. Don't. <laughs> I was bigger. Okay. Right now, I'm a little thin. But you know what? I have some definition on me. Not compared to these guys. But like compared to nobody. Anyways, yeah. So met her in class. She used to work at this supplement place. Right? Yeah. You turned me on to Jet Mass. Oh, I, I did, huh? That was Jet Mass is low key. Well, I can't give any free advertising out, but that <laughs> that stuff was golden, man. What up, gang? We are at the gnarliest gym you ever seen in your life. This place is filthy, bro. I am the smallest guy in the gym. There are some girls with some great butt cheeks in here. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm so like starstruck by this gym. I literally don't even know how to fix this thing. I don't even know how to put this shit up. No, on the real though, I have no idea how to put this up. There we go. Ferda. Let's go, baby. Okay, let's let's get loose.
any superstitions or rituals for me on game day. I am not that superstitious of a baseball player, I like to say, but you know, you get up to the dish and you go four for four in the same socks. I would still wash the socks. I'm not playing in crusty ass socks, dude. I want fresh socks on my feet if I'm gonna be splitting gas, but I definitely would think twice about putting on a different pair. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm not that superstitious, I would say. Rituals, dude, I would just hit, hit, hit all night long, dude. I actually used to hit, I built a batting cage when I transferred D1 to the NAI in our backyard. We were in the middle of Kansas and I built a batting cage and I would hit at literally midnight. It, my roommates can vouch for this, we don't talk anymore, but it would be like midnight. I would have my car lights shining on my batting cage with a pitching machine just feeding me 90 miles per hour from 40 feet. So the ball's going like 110, I mean, it wasn't 90 from 40, it was probably, it was going about 110. So whatever that is from 40, whatever the equivalence ratio is or whatever, I had it coming in blazing speed, barely being able to see. And that's what really trained my eyesight and make me able to hit. If you want to look up my numbers, my last year is like 385, 12 doubles, three trips, three bombs, 32 RBIs and a 38 game span in the worst weather possible. So I was playing in 20 degree weather with the wind blowing in 100 miles per hour, literally every single game. most favorite video I've shot for my social media? Man, that's a tough question. I'd have to say that the outfield combos, I guess, like it all started in the outfield. I can still remember the first day I walked into the outfield, man. We just got quarantined. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was kind of freaking out because I'm sitting in my house with nothing to do and like, I can't do that, man. I like, I can barely sit still. So I walked into the outfield, started talking about big old hooters in the stands and kabang, that went off. I remember my guy, one of my homies came with me and like, I was gonna put him in the video actually, but like he just couldn't do it. He like sounded so like awkward. So I was like, I'll just talk to myself, which is like the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> so um, yeah, I guess the outfield combos are great. I like the coach getting ejected ones. Those are always good. I like it all, man. If I'm making it, I like it. But hey, I like whatever you like, man. Whatever makes you crack up, I like it. But outfield combos, I guess. Started off today, ladies and gentlemen, at the baseball field. What a day, man. I had this guy hop in like six different fences, man, because you got to break and enter, man, if you're going to want to make videos these days. So we made some TikToks, bullpen combos, and um, umpire thoughts. Great videos. From there, went to Marucci hitting facility, then went to the gym, sickest gym I've ever seen. Absolutely sweet. Um, I was the smallest guy in there by far. And they were like, why is this guy getting videoed? But hey, you know what? You got to do what you got to do. Hey, you got to start somewhere. If you're small, then get big, dude. Whatever. So now I'm out. I'm piecing back out I'm from Arizona. If you live in Arizona, you want to say what's up to me, you know. Follow me on Instagram. 100 underscore G. That is my Instagram and my TikTok if you're not already following me. All the sauce, dude, you saw in my video, all from my site. It's in my Instagram link if you want to be sauced out. Hey. When it's all said and done, man, I'm just thankful that God's blessed me with these opportunities, man. I'm living life, trying to make, you know, people smile. You know, I might, I might lace it back up for the boys. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, I'll be continuing to make videos and uh, get chicks.